to you whom we have seen, stalking at night by eyes keen, transcendent of savages, sating first sans avarice. Your coffers stay stuffed, by social graces robust. None know your nature, save us. None share your fate, save us. None welcome you as kin, save us. Vampires are vile, bloodthirsty creatures, as lamentable as their wretched patron, the Daedra Lord Molag Bal. The revulsion that bedevils most mortals at the thought of a vampire is not uncommon. Anti-vampire sentiment is rampant across Tamriel, and so it should be. Those driven to vigilant action by the danger of bloodsuckers in their midst often bolster the ranks of the legendary Dawnguard in the north, or the Order of the Virtuous Blood in the Heartland. With these orders of devoted vampire hunters around, offering enticing bounties for prospective slayers, you'd think the remaining clans would turn to bats and spread their membranous wings, flying as far from civilization as possible. And for the most part, this is true. Most small vampire tribes spend the daylight hours in isolation, sheltered in remote caves. Even the ancient Volkahar clan made their home on the frozen shores of the Sea of Ghosts, far from the ports of Solitude and Dawnstar. But there is one order of vampires that do not fear hunters, nor do they hide in secluded lairs. No, they conceal themselves in plain sight. They are everywhere and nowhere, embroiled in every political machination, every social hub, and they have an abundance of wealth and influence. They reside in Tamriel's most prosperous province, and they have successfully ousted all opposing vampire clans from Cyrodiil. And what's best, most mortals haven't the faintest idea it's happening, as they've learnt the dark secrets needed to blend in with the common folk. This ancient order of vampires has the imperial province in a stranglehold. They're sucking the blood right out of the heartland, and no one can stop them. This is the Cyrodiil Vampirum Order, the richest, most influential vampire clan in Tamriel. As brighter grows light, darker becomes shadow. So it passed that the Daedra Molag Bal looked on Arke and fought the Aedra prideful of his dominion over the death of man and myrrh. Molag Bal, the tormentor of men and the harvester of souls, lacked not the finality of mortality. Mortals may fear their inevitable death, but in the eyes of Bal, whose goal is to enslave and inflict eternal suffering on the souls of men and myrrh, death was an escape. In the afterlife, mortals were free from his cold, sharp clutches. The god of burial rites, R.K., made sure of this by propagating the circle of life. In defiance of the divines, Molag Bal conjured up a treacherous scheme, one that would undo R.K.'s work and appall the Aedra. He chose the purest mortal maiden in the land, a young virgin priestess dedicated to spreading the good word of R.K., and he profaned her. The King of Rape was a savage beast even in human form, and his victim named Lamay B. Alphag let out a long and blood-curdling scream. It would do little to ease her physical and mental agony, and that scream would become the shrieking winds that haunt the winding fjords of Skyrim for the rest of time. When Bal left her, LeMay lay on the precipice of death. In parting, he shed a single drop of his blood, which landed on her brow. Eventually, she was found by a group of passing nomads, who took the young girl in, and tried frivolously to nurse her back to health. Two weeks later, they resolved that the girl was beyond saving, and the weird woman of the tribe began to shroud LeMay in a pool, and the rest of the nomads built her funeral pyre. That night, LeMay rose from the fire, alive but aflame, and set upon the coven. She ripped the throats of the women, ate the eyes of the children, and violated their men as cruelly as Baal had ravished her. From that day on, LeMay Bal became known as the Blood Matron, Molag Bal's lover, daughter of Cold Harbor, and mother of all vampires. Arke's sacred cycle was desecrated just as the innocent priestess was, and her brood of abominations would plague Tamriel forevermore. Much like LeMay Bal when she rose from her pyre, and Molag Bal in his savagery, their vampiric offspring are not known for being overly inconspicuous. Usually a vampire's insatiable lust for blood is enough to do away with any subtlety, and even an untrained eye can detect the protruding fangs, pale sunken skin, and crimson eyes of a common vampire. So you can't really blame most vampires for living in darkness and isolation. But the Cyrodiil Vampirum Order had no intention of spending their immortal lives in some dank cavern. What's the point in living for thousands of years if you spend most of your time miles away from civilization and all of its intrigue? 
the Vampirum Order, or Our Order as members would call it, enjoy procuring power and entangle themselves within the political structures of the Heartland. This can't be done from some remote lair, and the Elder Council aren't going to tolerate a vampire in their meetings. This is why long ago the Order sought out the help of the Daedra, specifically Clavicus Vile, the Prince of Pax. When this meeting took place is a mystery, as the Order is so ancient that even its true name is lost to history. But in their manifesto, the Order gives thanks to the Prince, and says, To Patron Clavicus Vile, beacon over our affairs, we owe our successes and social stature. Our bond with Vile makes us unique among our kind, for his guidance steals our savage craving with reason and savvy. For him we live amidst mankind, and twist them to our will from offices of power. Vile rarely offers such boons without a hefty price, but whatever the terms of the deal happened to be, the order seemingly flourished as a result. Though I can't confirm anything, as just like everyone else, I wouldn't be able to identify a member of the elusive order, even if they were standing right in front of me. This Daedric deal would likely make for a fascinating tale, but the fact it happened means learning about them is extremely difficult. The Volcahar vampires have a distinct culture, a detailed history, and they even adhere to the typical vampire stereotypes, mounting gargoyles at the entrance to their castle, and hosting bloody banquets in their garish dining hall. The Vampirum Order of Cyrodiil, however, all we can do is speculate and refer to their brief manifesto. First and foremost, the Order denounces the vulgarity of their more savage vampire brethren, who tear throats with orgiastic abandon to satiate base desires. This fraternity is not entirely free from bloodlust, as Clavicus Vile simply granted them the wisdom to suppress their cravings in the interest of bettering the Order. But while they still smell the tantalizing aroma of freshly drawn blood, and their fangs ache at the thought of sinking into the flesh of a ripe victim, they prioritize their hunger for influence and affluence. What's especially interesting what's interesting about this is that the Vampirum Order don't seem to have a particular base of operations. They consider the entirety of Cyrodiil to be their stronghold, and they suffer no savage rivals within their boundaries. That's right, somehow this Order has managed to rid the province of other vampire clans, all the while revealing themselves to no one. Even their fellow sons and daughters of Molag and Lamay Bal are oblivious to their power, so you can see why the common masses are blind to the manipulative strategies of the Order. They steer the hand of society to meet their ominous agendas. In their ancient manifesto, they elaborate on their dual patrons Molag Bal and Clavicus Vile, as well as their treatment of adversaries. They are quick to dismiss most vampire tribes as wasteful and therefore weak. They claim that most barbaric tribes think themselves powerful by the gift of Bao's blood alone, and they squander that gift. But they also acknowledge those groups who could potentially pose a threat to their secret order. Firstly, the Glenmoral Weird, or the Glenmoral Coven as they are often called. These witches also devote their work to a Daedric patron. In their case, it is the Prince of the Hunt, Hercene. Many of the Coven's members are in fact vampires, and they have a strong presence in High Rock, predominantly the major cities of the Iliac Bay. Secondly, they acknowledge the wet fang sodality of Black Marsh. The notorious Argonian vampires developed an ingenious tactic to harvest blood from victims. They would use magicka to keep captives catatonic and harvest the redneck at their leisure. In response to this potential threat, the Order says, These foes may one day threaten to impugn our sovereignty within the boundaries of Cyrodiil, thus compelling our vigilance. Should any encroach upon our dominion, our wrath must be swift and total. The last topic in the manifesto addresses the Order's conduct. The following edicts were instated by the Order to ensure the endurance of their ideals. The most important tenet for those privy to the Order's secrets is to reveal themselves to no other, as discretion is their single greatest virtue. That much is obvious by the fact I can't show you them in this video, only talk about them. And in accordance with this virtue, members must never feed where they may be found, or on anyone who may suspect them. It becomes a balancing act though, as feeding is essential for them to maintain their inconspicuous appearance. They must avoid direct sunlight and dispel any rumours regarding their existence. Their next edict involves their common goal of attaining influence wherever possible, be it political or other. The Vampira Morda's strength is not found in numbers, but in the skillful manipulation of society. In truth, the only numbers that matter to the Order are how much gold each member has, and how many mortals are under their sway. Lastly, if members always remember to honour their dual patrons, as well as other members, the Order will always count them amongst their own. 
All things considered, the lack of information we have on the Cyrodiil Vampirum Order is astounding. If they truly are embroiled deep within the political structure of Tamriel's historically most prolific province, then it's incredible that so few people know of their existence. It's fair to speculate that just about any of the Empire's most influential political figures could well be a vampire, with hidden motives. There's a joke in here somewhere about politicians being blood-sucking monsters, but it feels lazy, so just pretend I said something really witty. While there's little to no mention of the Order in Cyrodiil during the time of the Oblivion Crisis, we can assume that most of the vampire encounters during that time were members of the Order, considering the fact that their rivals had been ousted from the province. But if that is true, they must have been lousy members if they were noticed. It is also possible that Janus Hasseldor, the former Count of Skingrad, was also a member of the Vampirum Order, and he serves as a good example of the Order's ability to infiltrate positions of high influence in Cyrodiilic society. Whatever the case, the Vampirum Order may just be the most secret faction in the Elder Scrolls, at least of the ones we've heard of. I'm sure they will not appreciate me talking about them at this length, so if you've come this far in the video, please don't watch it. But there you have it guys, Tamriel's richest vampires, the Cyrodiil Vampirum Order. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for stopping by, my name is Drew, this is Fudge Muppet, and I'll see you in the next one.